4chan users allegedly hacked Hunter Biden's iCloud, iCloud over the weekend, and loads of his data hit the internet, showing videos of him in the depths of his addiction and what looks to be foreign prostitutes. Now, if you Google for the data, you might have a hard time finding the story because Google search engine won't show you any results. Instead, they show you this sign that says, it looks like results are changing quickly, adding that it can sometimes take time for reliable sources to publish information. So they're oh, really not letting you. Yeah, I, I tried the search myself. I could not, it was to say, yeah, I was blocked from getting results from, I mean, you get some here and there, uh, maybe like on Twitter, for example, but that's, you don't get much. They're, they're definitely filtering results when it comes to this, beyond mm. filtering. Mm. So, yeah. um, um, okay, I think you guys are going to disagree with me about this, but I think um, the, I, I have sort of, I don't think I have much of a problem with that because, you know, it, so, so to the extent that Hunter Biden is an extension of his dad and presents a, a potential um, national security threat because there are embarrassing things about him that our enemies could get their hands on and use to, to to blackmail Joe Biden. To that extent, it is in the public interest to release this personal embarrassing data, right? Um, to the extent that he is himself a private citizen and a deeply flawed person who has a lot of this very embarrassing history, you know, to that extent, you know, I think it's less justifiable. So this is to me represents sort of the best of both worlds to where like, you know, in a way like his privacy is sort of still being protected by big tech by saying, you know, this is going to be available, but not easily available, which means that it can't be used to blackmail Joe Biden because it's already out there. But at the same time, Time as a private citizen, we aren't all being constantly bombarded with these like very, very gross pictures and videos of him in very, very compromising situations that really are none of our business when they right. have nothing to do with. What do you guys make of that yeah, argument? You know, Bacha, I do not totally disagree with you at all. <laughs> it, it, this is, uh, well, and I, I've said on this show that w one of the very few, and we, you and I disagree, I think, a lot on what sort of policies we want to see to address some of the deficiencies that we do agree exist on social media. I think we agree on a lot of the problems, would disagree on, on what should be done. But I have said that that I think there should be stronger criminalization of of what is clearly like revenge porn, essentially. He, and he is having his like private videos and photos shared against his will, which is something that in some cases is a crime, I think should be more of a crime. But the issue here is that, well, it's not just a private city, it's, you know, it's a it's a person in the public interest. So there there has to be some way to talk about it and have the public be aware of it to the extent it that it may be uh, you know, implies some kind of criminal behavior, and we're you know we're still trying to figure out. Uh, and if it's his own private criminal behavior, even that isn't necessarily of public significance. But we're you know we want to know what Joe Biden knew, uh, you know how connected he was to it. So it is kind of murky and difficult um, to deal with. And I, I you know I always tell people that so in Europe has gone about all these things in a very not specifically Hunter Biden stuff, but how to handle tech privacy stuff, where they default to privacy. We, we default to kind of free expression mm -hmm. and free speech, and I think mostly that's the better impulse. But in a couple places. I would prefer privacy. And uh, Europe is so much more about privacy. You can, you know, y y it's, a, it's a law that you can petition Google to uh, delete mm -hmm. results for your name that you don't like. Yeah. And Google gr ends up granting about half of those. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's a law on the books in, in Europe. So it's a, it's a very different approach. What do you think, Kim? It's really tricky because, yeah. you know, uh, I do think that like for example, with, with Julian Assange, right? So this is the case that would come up in my mind is this accusation of hacked material and that hacked material then being published. And then there's protections on that published material. Uh, we even saw this with the Pentagon Papers, right? There's, so however, if, even if you procure the documents illegally, it is still in the public interest to see those documents and or photos or whatever it might be. And so, therefore, you know, it, it, the, the public mm -hmm. has the right to see it, even though you could still go to jail yourself if you're the one who did the hacking, if they can find you. Now, I don't think that was Julian Assange in that particular case, but somebody found, somebody got in and got the documents. Same thing with this one, right? Somebody potentially, if this is actually Hunter Biden's iCloud data, it looks to be 
uh, legitimate, but a lot of, you, but you, then you don't know, you know, you kind of, I've, I've looked through a bit of it. You have to be kind of skeptical. You don't know how much stuff is Photoshopped in, what yeah. people have changed and added to it. You know, how yes. much of it is real, how much of it is fake. That's where it gets really, really murky. Totally. Um, and so, you know, th I definitely agree about the privacy thing. I also agree that, you know, if, if, uh, you, if your phone is hacked, and your private videos or images that maybe you share with your spouse, for example, are now leaked to the world. I mean, wasn't Pam Anderson? Didn't she have that with the Tommy Lee video? And that wasn't they didn't they get robbed and somebody got the, the tape and then oh, wow. published? I think that I, I'm not 100. That, I think it that was a robbery in, the, in one of these cases. I mean, there, this has happened, you know, like 80 times to various yeah. celebrities now. And there was a robbery. I'm, I'm not sure if that time was the robbery. It might have been. But uh, it might is, have been, uh, but right. But some, there's, yeah. you know, instances of this happening and that material is still out there for people to see. So I, you know, it's, it's, I think, but it's obviously theft, right? You're burglarizing, right. essentially, you're, you're breaking into somebody's personal belongings. And then in this particular instance, when it comes to data, you're putting the data out there for the world to see. And that is almost like going and robbing someone's home and then auctioning off all of their things. Uh, on the internet, and then what kind of recourse does the person have when they find those items and say, hey, that belongs to me? And it used to be the case, and, and you can probably speak to this, Bacha, it, you know, it used to be the case when there was more trust in the mainstream media that you could, right, you could have something like this occur, or you know, someone would get surreptitious information, then they would bring it to a New York Times or a Washington Post, and then those people, you know, would, using their expertise, would vet it, would find out, you know, how well is this in the public interest, what part of this is in the public interest, and then maybe summarize for you what it is without just all the unfiltered information being out there. But now we no longer have that justifiably. We don't necessarily trust those institutions to give us the pertinent information to not shield and right. do those kinds of things, which is, a, which is an issue we deal with. I think that yeah, is 100 percent right, Robbie. Yeah. I mean, if you think about, for example, how the media treated the Steele dossier, right, and the mm -hmm. whole concept of the P-tape, right, which they couldn't mm -hmm. get enough of when it was totally unverified, as opposed to how the liberal media and social media treated Hunter Biden's laptop before um, the, the election, a time at which it was 100 percent in the public interest to know, you know, for example, what the New York Post reported, right, which now they're sort of being proven again and again to be you know, to have been so prescient. But I totally agree with you, Robbie. You know, there's at that point, social media um, censoring a story in a, a legacy media outlet that had been vetted by actual journalists. Right. That is so different than saying, you know, actually, this data drop full of personal information that nobody has gone through, that nobody has vetted. We're just going to sort of ease up on the search results a little bit. You know, again, yeah. I agree with both of you. It is murky. And I am sort of in favor of like the average citizen being able to go through it and make their own mind up. But I, I like you, Robbie, I lament the absence of um, a credible media that could be doing that job for us. Yeah, that's that's the difference between now and back then. And it's just uh, it's just a problem, right. huge problem. All right. Well, that was a great discussion. Uh, tomorrow on Rising, we'll also talk about a one source story concerning a 10 year old needing an abortion that went viral. And there's been some fact checking of that. And it's maybe a little bit murkier uh, than people thought. And I had such a good time here with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Tomorrow you will be joined by Brianna Joy Gray, which I'm sure is going to be amazing as well. All right, guys. Well, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts, so be sure to check that out. And it was so great to have you here today, Batya. Thank so you. Great. It was so we'll great to be here with you all. Absolutely. We'll see everybody tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye.